Welcome to Trampoline STEM with Math Mind Workshop. How do trampolines make you bounce? Some think the black mat on a trampoline is stretchy and makes you bounce. But if you were to grab a section and try to pull and stretch it, it wouldn't stretch at all. So what does make you bounce? The springs that hold onto the net actually provide the push that makes you bounce. Once you're up in the air, what force pulls you back down again? Gravity, of course. The springs on a trampoline push you up and gravity pulls you down. Together these simple forces make you bounce. But some forces are more complex than they may appear. Gravity is one of those. Let's zoom out. What if you're jumping on a trampoline at the North Pole and your friend is jumping on a trampoline at the South Pole? What direction do you both fall? Do you both fall down or do you fall towards each other? While it might look to you like gravity pulls you down, it's actually pulling you both towards the center of the Earth. Now that you know how a trampoline works, your engineering challenge is to build something like a trampoline that will increase the upward force on a falling ball and increase its bounce height. The first step in this challenge is to find the materials that you'll need. Trampolines, like a lot of other technologies, use springs to create movement because when they're stretched out, they want to pull back to their original shape. You probably don't have a lot of springs lying around your house, so you'll need to find something else that can stretch out and snap back. Here's a hint. The spring force is also called the elastic force. For something to stretch out, it needs to be attached to a frame of some sort, like the frame of a trampoline. For your engineering challenge, it will help if your frame is open in the middle, like an empty box or a stand made out of building bricks, or even a roll of tape. But it can also be made out of an object with pegs in it such as nails in a board or sticks in the ground, or whatever idea you might have. The next step in your engineering challenge is to draw a design for your idea and then build it. You may want to pause the video while you gather your materials, draw your design, and build your device. Once your device is built, it's time to test it. Pick a clear location to test your device and choose an object to drop that's safe. We recommend a soft ball or a bean bag so that it doesn't bounce up and break anything. First, drop your object from a height of 100 centimeters onto the ground and measure how high it bounces back up, if it does. Then drop it from a height of 100 centimeters onto your device and measure how high it bounces back up. Did your ball bounce higher from your device? Did your device add an upward force to the ball? If so, great job! If you'd like to redesign your device or change it in any way, go for it, but remember to test again. You've used science, technology, and engineering to explore trampolines. Now we're going to use a little bit of math to see how bouncy your device was. Notice that the ball never bounced higher than the height it fell from. What fraction of the total height was the rebound height? To find this fraction, the bottom number, or denominator, is the total distance the ball fell. Since you dropped both of them from 100 centimeters, the denominator is 100 centimeters for both fractions. The top number, or numerator, is the distance the ball bounced back up. Since the ball bounced to a different height from your device than it did from the floor, the numerators will be different. You can probably figure out how much higher the ball bounced from your device than it did from the ground, but what fraction of the total height is this increase? One way to find out is to subtract your fractions. Remember that to subtract fractions, the denominators have to be the same. Luckily, the denominators already are the same, so you just subtract the numerators. Your answer will be a fraction of 100, or the fraction of the total height that the bounce increased. This will help you know how bouncy your device is. Fractions can also be written as decimals, and it's especially easy when the denominator is already 100. Look at these examples. What do you think we did to convert a fraction with the denominator of 100 into a decimal? How are the numerators and the decimals the same? And how are they different? Use this rule to convert your fractions into decimals as well. There's more math that can be done with your test results. What else can you do? Can you simplify either of the fractions? Can you subtract the decimals? If you do, what does this tell you? How is the difference of the decimals similar to the difference of the fractions? And how is it different? Can you convert your fractions into percents? 
Can you draw a picture to show the meaning of the fractions? Science, technology, engineering, and math all play a huge part in the designing and building of trampolines. Thanks for joining us today, and don't forget to check back for more Trampoline STEM, brought to you by MathMindWorkshop.com.